When you engulf and encompass this beef, there were so many parts about it and it started to happen so quick. So to your point, I do get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, level of disrespect is there. Yes. It, okay. started, it started to get there. Yeah, and not for nothing, mm -hmm. this is... This is our Nas and Jay Z. It is mm -hmm. right, like even in so turn, many parallels. Right, even it's, I'm glad you said so parallel. Many parallels. The parallel between the two of them. Before you go into that next point, right, like Jay Z at the time, right, flashy. Talk about mm -hmm. I got the V12, you got the V6, nigga. Ha ha ha. You know, chains <laughs> flashy. Facts. Nas at the time, um, great rapper. Facts. Um, he spoke about things going on with the kids and the community. So just to see the parallel between a Jay Z, Jake, uh, Drake. And the parallel between uh, Nas and, and Kendrick has been interesting to me. And when mm -hmm. we're talking about the, yeah. the and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we're talking about not just the capabilities or the skills, yeah. but also how it's framed as far as their image, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Image as far as the underdog, um, the favorite, um, even to their interests, where Jay-Z, back in his heyday, he always spoke to the niggas that's getting money, right. to business, um, to the women. Whereas Nas yeah. always seemed to have like a message. He always mm -hmm. been seemed to be like for the people. Exactly. Um, and now they both dibble and dabble in both, right? Like I don't want to keep them in one lane because mm -hmm. the 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 greatness of their artistry is that they're all encompassing. Mm -hmm. It's not just linear, but. The imagery and the messaging of who they were is very comparable to Drake and Kendrick it's a good, Lamar. Yeah, it's a good it really is. Absolutely. It really yeah. is. But unlike their beef, we got social media. We have a ton more uh, uh, pundits. Um, there's a lot of more people who can give their voices to the situation. So when I say this is the greatest rap beef, like, and again, this may age like sour milk, <laughs> but I feel like a lot of things that I've said on this podcast in particular, especially like last week about the crash out, <laughs> yeah. I still stand by. Oh, for sure. Yeah. These guys needed to crash out in order to become a victor of this fight, For sure. right? Yeah. This is probably the greatest from a quality standpoint, from the quality of artists. I think this is the best rap beef from the quality of songs. I don't think there's any song, and, and we'll have that debate as we go through it. I don't think there's any song that is like, oh my God, turn the shit off. Mm -hmm. I think every song lends to something. I think the quality of this, even from the producers that they have, starting with Metro. Stacked. Alchemist. And then the latest one at the time of this recording has been DJ Mustard. Alchemist. Mm -hmm. Then we got Alchemist. Mm -hmm. And we also got Boy Wonder. Mm -hmm. Like, there Production is, is a collective. Don't forget Taylor Swift producer now. Yeah, don't forget. Don't forget Jack Atenoff. You would, you... <laughs> so it's literally Taylor Made. Taylor Made. Oh, shit. All of it. <laughs> all of it. He's like, anyway. like all of it. It's just like I bet yeah. we 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 are here. Yeah, this is not sure. a rap beef. This is not subliminals. This is a rap war. And I f I'm glad that you mentioned uh, the different generations. Mm -hmm. I think from generation to generation, they're gonna have their favorite because mm -hmm. they connected more to that beef, right? Uh, every generation has a defining beef. Yeah. The yeah. Defining beef, right? They remember where they were, who they were with, yeah. what was going down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When when KRS One was beefing with MC Shan mm -hmm. with the bridge and all of that stuff, right? Everybody at that time. Rap being so new, like, oh my God, this is amazing for hip hop. This is the biggest thing I've ever seen. So I'm glad that our generation is getting our version of that in some level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For We're sure. literally the exact target audience for what is going on right now. That's yes. why I feel so blessed that we can just sit here and really like Dissected. document it. Yeah. For, yes, this lives forever. Yeah. And we grew up with it. This yeah. beef has been manifesting for 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ten Crazy. years ago, we're in our, we're teenagers, mm -hmm. and some of us knew it was brewing, and some yeah. of us didn't. Yeah. But like you said, Reggie, like at the end of the day, we won. So I do want to yeah. start there. Yes, the Asians, start... the Asians, we won. <laughs> <laughs> knew how came. Knew how came. Up. Period. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, <laughs> do your thing. Like, sorry, you crazy. said we won. Sorry. We, we, when, and when I say we, I mean Stupid. like just the people that grow with it. Yeah, yep, for sure. Yep, like you yep. said, if you were in high school. If you were in college when J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick really got on the scene, we've been able to grow with these artists in a different way. Yeah, We've been able to see their maturation. We've been able to see their evolution from the cadence to even the sound of their voice. Mm -hmm. Drake doesn't sound the same way today that he did in 2010. No. Mm -hmm. You mean like Fonte? Neither, all, hmm? <laughs> you, you know Fonte from Little Brother? Yeah. Well, what he did though. What he did? I, I don't know. Nah, you know, it's funny. Like, I was listening to a Fonte song, uh -huh. 
And then Dre started rapping. I was listening to a lot of Drake's old songs because I used in my birthday recap his, his song Video Girl. Yes. What a, I, I, want didn't know, I didn't know that was Drake, by the way. You didn't know that was No. Where? Guys, go on my Instagram. When watch I my birthday song, recap. I had to listen. So, <laughs> selfishly, yeah. Reggie put me in her birthday recap. On my Instagram, guys. So, I had to watch it a few times. <laughs> I'm like, like oh, too. shit, it's me. Hey, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> but I, I was listening to the voice. I'm like, wait, this sounds like Drake. Yeah. But I couldn't find it on like Apple Music type mm -hmm. shit. You want me to send it to you right now? Gems, no, you do be having a gym. So like even from the maturation of how they sound like from puberty, like these niggas went through puberty in front of us. <laughs> a lot literally. of them, like legit. So and this has been something that we've all been waiting for. I think at yeah. the end of the day, because and I know I said some I said some ignorant shit on the last episode. I'm not gonna lie to you. You said you a few did. things. Oh my bad. All right, yo, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah. Relax. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I, I don't think this is going to get violent as of now. I think, obviously, there's a chance if they're in, like, close proximity, sure, maybe there may be, like, whatever, a little scuffle, whatever. Right. Like, this is still hip-hop. There's still men at the end of the day. Mm. Outside of the genre being the genre, I think we're all still men. Yeah, but I, I, it doesn't mm. seem to me like it's going to get violent. And yeah. because of that, I think that's another reason why it's one of the greatest hip-hop beefs ever because yeah. nobody looks at these guys like real threats on some Biggie and Pac shit or some 50 Cent game shit. Like, yeah. we're looking at this like, wait... This is really the epitome of the sport. For sure.